welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Summer. Today, I brought back my brother once again. <laughs> We're gonna be doing a fun little video for you guys. It's gonna be all the tips you need to know if you are planning on traveling to Cuba. So we have 12 very important tips. Actually, we also put them in order from most important to least important, but they're really all important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, let's get into the video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and like this video, and let's jump right in. All right, hot tip number one. You need, need, need to have a visa to travel into Cuba. So, the best way to do this is to stop somewhere out of the country along the way. So we were traveling from California and we stopped in Panama before we got to Cuba. And Panama is where we bought our visa. So I say this because if you stop somewhere along the way rather than traveling direct, your visa is gonna be a lot cheaper. So we got ours for $20 when we stopped in Panama. But if you fly direct from Miami or wherever else there's direct flights, you are going to have to pay for a visa once you get in Cuba, and it's usually around a hundred dollars. And we paid twenty for ours because we bought mm -hmm. it in a different country. And also right. check to see if it's included in your flight. Some airlines will include it, some won't. Ours was not, so you have to make sure you buy your visa if it's not included in the purchase price of your uh, airline ticket. You have to buy it at the last airport you're at before you enter Cuba. Exactly, and we flew Copa Airlines and it was not included. I'm not sure which airlines do include it and do not include it. Tip number two. Hot tip. So in order to travel to Cuba, you have to have health insurance. It's a short-term health insurance plan just for your vacation or your business or whatever you're doing to go over there. Now, they say it's absolutely mandatory and you have to buy it before you enter Cuba, but they didn't even check to see if we had it. So... Go to AllianceTravelInsurance.com, Alliance with a Z at the end. Instead of a C-E, it's a Z, AllianceTravelInsurance.com, and buy the cheapest plan you can. We bought two for $50, mm -hmm. 25 mm -hmm. each, I believe. And so it's super cheap, and they didn't even check, So, but they say it's mandatory. So. They wouldn't even let us get on the plane. We were literally the last ones to board our plane at LAX because they said it was mandatory to get into Cuba, but nobody ever checks for it. So... Just buy it ahead of time because everyone else seemed to have it and you don't have to worry about it once you get there. Check to see if it's included in your air fare as well because some of them are. All right, hot tip number three. Screenshot all your important documents, um, stuff that you looked up before you went to Cuba, uh, before you actually get there because once you get there, internet is super hard to find, which we'll be talking about um, in a little bit. But for example, if you have Airbnbs, reservations make sure you screenshot those before you get there your travel insurance that we just mentioned make sure you screenshot it before you get there anything else you can think of pictures of places you want to go uh, any that. type of reservations for hotels or for excursions or anything mm -hmm. that you absolutely want because we would pictures we would find on Instagram or online we would just have to show people like where is this but we didn't have access to internet, so we wouldn't be able to pull it up. So just screenshot right. everything that's important to you before you go. That way you have it all. You can even put it in a separate folder mm -hmm. in your photo albums on your phone if you want to. Makes it a lot easier. So just screenshot right. everything that's important. Hot tip number four. Absolute lifesaver. Go to the app store, download maps.me. It's an absolute must. We yes. both used it every minute of every day that we were in Cuba. And what you do is you're going to go to maps.me. You're going to download the entire country. It's a map of the entire country, and it downloads it onto your phone is where it's saved. So you don't need internet access to now access the map. Mm -hmm. And it'll show you everything from restaurants uh, to places to go. It'll even route uh, maps for you to see how to get places and directions and hotels mm -hmm. and monuments and everything you need is on maps.me. The other cool thing is that you can leave a review or you can see other people's reviews. So some things don't have a review, but then others will say, oh, 8.6 or 9.3 or whatever. So you can actually see comments that other people have left about places you're interested in going. So it's exactly like your maps on your iPhone, um, but you can use it there with no internet whatsoever. So definitely saved us. Yep. Huge, huge, huge. Because a lot of times we would 
tell people where we wanted to go, taxi drivers for example, and they would have no idea and we would show them the map. This is exactly where we want to go. We would have it routed out and everything and then they would know where to take us. Another important thing to download is a Spanish dictionary. So people actually spoke a lot more English than we thought they would there. We thought it, they would speak basically none, but it's important to have this just for like the small wor words that you don't remember and just to help to try to kind of form sentences. You can't actually translate whole phrases or sentences when you're offline but it will break it apart word by word because it's already saved in the dictionary so you can kind of still put it together just by looking up um, words and whatnot so that was a huge help because a lot of times we would you know want to communicate with people but we would forget things like how to say waterfall for example you know we wanted to go to a waterfall in Sodoa and we looked up how to say it which was what El, El Cascade or Cascada, Cascada. Think, yeah and also directions to give a driver too like here there left next to all that right kind of stuff. right all right hot tip number five before you go make sure you convert your money this is if you live in the U.S. it is different obviously for people from Europe or Canada because they have different currency make sure if you are an American you convert your currency either to euro or to Canadian before you get there we did it to Canadian just because we did all the conversion rates and we thought that that was the best conversion rate going from US to Canadian to CUP, which is what they call it there. You don't want to keep your money in actual US dollars because they do charge, I think it was like a 10% fee or something to change your money once you get there. So definitely make sure you have it in either Euro or Canadian ahead of time before you get there. And then as soon as you get off the plane, in the airport, there are little kiosks that you can go to and then you can convert your money right there, no problem. I don't even think there was a fee um, and we got our money with no problems. And if you need to, in town, you can also convert at local banks. Just look it up on maps.me and see if there's a bank around if you get into um, a pinch like mm -hmm. we did. I had to go to a bank to convert some extra money, so that's also an option. Tip number six, <laughs> okay. This is an absolute must, and it's also a lifesaver. This could even be like tip number one. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> okay, take baby wipes and hand sanitizer with you wherever you go every day of the trip. You can bring baby wipes with you. I encourage to do it on the plane. You're not going to be able to buy any there, so have to take them with you in your luggage, as well as those small uh, sanitizer bottles to use with your hands. Take them everywhere because there is no toilet paper in any of the public restrooms in Cuba, there's rarely any soap, and there's usually not any toilet seats. So no. it's pretty disgusting, and so carry on all your excursions, everywhere you go, walking, whatever, baby wipes, hand sanitizer. Yes, so we bought the baby wipes ahead of time, just, you know, a normal baby wipe pack, and then obviously those things are really big, and we didn't want to take the whole thing with us wherever we went, so I just brought a resealable bag, a Ziploc bag is fine too, and we just put a few in for the day, and then that's what we took with us everywhere we went, and I cannot stress to you how much this saved us, especially me, because with the food that you eat there and the ice and stuff, it can really affect, you know, your insides and cause a lot of bowel movements. So you want to make sure that you have that. And of course, like you said, hand sanitizer. None of the women's restrooms ever had soap. I know he said that the men's did, but mine never did. So hand sanitizer wherever you go. I would also carry Tums with you throughout mm. the entire trip too, just in case you do get upset stomach. It'll come in handy. Yes. Definitely. Tums or Pepto-Bismol, whatever helps you bring that for your tummy problems. <laughs> Number seven, we know all of you guys are wondering about it. How is the Wi-Fi there? How do you get service there? Well, we are going to tell you exactly how. So what you have to do is buy these little vouchers. I will put a picture of it in the side of the screen. Um, they are from this place called Etesca. I think that's how you it pronounce texa. it. Etexa. It's an I abbreviation don't know. for the telecommunications of Cuba or something. Right. So locals go there as well as tourists. The locals, it's kind of like their local phone service. And for tourists, that is the only place in Cuba you can go to buy Wi-Fi cards. So all they sell are our Wi-Fi vouchers and you can buy them for one cook, which is also equal to one US dollar, which I think is a pretty good deal. And we got one 
for each of us each day we were there so we were there six days we ended up spending twelve dollars or twelve cook on these and that is like I said the only place you can get it the only bummer is there's only specific areas you can use these Wi-Fi vouchers so when we were in Varadero Beach there was a little bar like a block from us that also had a Tesco Wi-Fi available there so we would go there every night to use our Wi-Fi voucher other than that there was nowhere near us there and then in Havana we had a hotel a couple blocks from us that you could go to where you could use the voucher or a park so almost every night we were in Havana I think except one night we were literally in a random park at 10 p.m. at night in the dark using our Wi-Fi voucher because that was the only place you could use it and another side note when you are using these vouchers in places like bars or hotels they charge a ridiculous amount for the drinks it's not even worth it because we spent one night ten dollars in drinks and we paid two dollars for the wi-fi vouchers because each drink was five dollars or five cook so definitely go to a park if you can we didn't mind it was pretty nice out for the most part so that's what you have to do step one go to the texas shop buy the voucher buy them all at once all, the, all at once you're gonna have to wait in line there's always a line, always a line. go in and, the morning and then step two is you take those vouchers and then you have to go find a wi-fi spot to use wi-fi mm -hmm. so it's two separate things you got to do there yes and like we said there's always a line and it takes forever because they let like two or three people in at a time so go in the morning i think we went at like 10 one morning and there was nobody there it was perfect perfect so we bought all of our vouchers there sometimes they sell them at the bars or hotels too but they charge an extra dollar so you can go there for convenience but you're gonna pay more tip number eight taxis in Cuba are through the roof expensive okay and we had to trial and error throughout our whole trip to find out what a taxi should cost taxis are super expensive we spent like $900 on the trip total between the two of us and $250 of that were just on taxis alone. So in Varadero Beach, we rode in a convertible, we bought a couple other taxi rides and we spent like 30 something dollars, $40 a day and it was ridiculous. And then, so what you have to do is you really have to bargain hard. So we found out that the sweet spot is about $2 a mile, especially in Havana, that's what we need $2 a mile. And we had to pass up three or four taxis just to find one that would take us for that rate. Because we, we were only about two to three miles outside right. of Old Havana and taxis kept wanting to charge $10, $10, we said no, five, and we finally find five. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that the older cars with the older drivers were the cheapest. I'll put a little picture here. <laughs> so they're like old, <laughs> we ran into one guy, he, he calls them Russian cars. Mm -hmm. And they're old Russian cars, but they're taxis with older drivers. And those are the ones that were super cheap. And then another tip on top of that is if you do a day trip to Vinales and Soroa, hire a, a taxi driver to be with you all day. And if you do it through the horseback riding uh, trip that we booked, it'll be $120. And the guy will arrange that for you, which mm -hmm. is a super awesome. cheap deal. And he took us everywhere we wanted to go. And he was with us the whole day for $120. And usually the going rate for Vinales, a full day, just to have a taxi driver with you and stay there is 140 or 150 so we got such a steal so you just want to make sure you know what the going rate is so that you're not overpaying also you'll see these little um, yellow cars which we called egg cars and they also want to rip you off they want to charge as much as the classic cars which is ridiculous because you're sitting outside in this little egg car um so definitely bargain hard with them as well and the ridiculous thing is that these cars are driving around no matter what, if they don't even have people in there, but they'd rather drive around with no one in them and make people pay more than just give a good deal and have people actually in their car making them money. And they don't really care. So if you don't mind, take those little Russian cars, um, but obviously you wanna ride in a convertible at least once or twice or do a tour in them and take some pictures. That's probably your best bet. Yeah, do a tour. I think it's like 30 or $40 for half an hour. It's expensive, but it don't is. take it anywhere else because it'll be too expensive. Right. Okay, hot tip number nine. This is more just kind of like insight into what you should be spending on food while you're there. 
Um, so we found that the average rate for dishes was anywhere between five and seven. Um, seven is on the high end. Some would be anywhere from seven to 18. We never got those ones on the 18 scale, but that was like lobster and like lobster, shrimp, and chicken all combined. But for um, a half chicken or a quarter chicken, which you'll see everywhere, you should not be paying more than five or six CUP for those dishes. And if a place is charging more than that, then you know you're getting ripped off. It's probably a tourist spot. Try to go places where the locals eat. Sometimes they'll even have the dishes in prices of CUP, which is the local rate. That's how you know you're at a local's place and you're getting a really great deal. We found one local's place in Havana. We ate there three nights in a row because we could get three huge dishes, sometimes even four, three beers, four beers for around $15 or 15 cook. Um, and that was because everything on the menu was in CUP and that's how you know you're getting a good deal. Also, Drinks should be no more than $3. You'll see them for $3.50, $4.50, a lot of places, but the average is three. That's what you should be paying, three or less actually, because we found a great spot in Havana that was also seemed to be a local spot, but it was in CUC on the menu, and their drinks were like $2.50, $2.75 for a great pina colada, amazing, best one we've ever had. Um, or a mojito or anything like that. So don't pay more than three or three fifty for a drink. That should be the max. Tip number ten. About half the restaurants we went to did not charge us tip included, and the other half did. So definitely check your bill to see if tip is included. The going rate is about ten percent. So usually you'll see it on the menu, it'll say it's probably somewhere small where you almost can't even read it. But we looked at every single menu just to make sure. And so about 50%, like I said, the tip was included so we didn't tip on top of it. And another tip is if you have large bills, which you will because you'll do your currency conversion, pay with your large bills and get a lot of small ones in return. Because at first we were using all of our small bills because things are $3 here, $2, $1, buy souvenirs, this and that. And then we were stuck with a bunch of 50s and 20s. And the restaurants and the places are gonna tell you, well, do you have anything smaller? It's like, well, no, because everybody else wanted smaller bills, so I'm out of small bills. So right. pay with your 50s and your 20s first. As much as you can, everywhere you go. Yeah, then get all your small bills and, and just save them uh, for when you want to bargain, especially mm -hmm. when you're buying souvenirs and gifts and stuff, and then you can pay them straight. Uh, right. That way, they're not looking at you all weird when you pay them. Right, because you don't want to bargain with someone and say you get them down to six or seven for something, and then you hand them a 10 and ask for change. Like, I feel like that's a little rude. So you definitely want to have smaller bills, and they also have dollar coins as well keep those for as long as you can, you know, until you're ready to bargain or get souvenirs at a lower price. Number 11, so we stayed at some great Airbnbs, which I will link below. Um, I wanna say the average was, what did we pay a night? 40 to 50. 40 to 50, these places were great. Um, the hosts were always super helpful. And one thing that they do at the Airbnbs is they offer to cook you breakfast. So the first place we went, you know, they took our order, they would make us breakfast, and then it wasn't until the very end we found out when we were checking out that they charged for breakfast. So the next place that we stayed, which was in Havana, we made sure to ask our Airbnb host, do you charge for breakfast? If so, what do you charge? The going rate is always five CUP, which isn't bad because- CUC. Sorry, per, CUC. Per person. Yes, per person. Um, and if you were to go to a restaurant, it would probably come out to more than that, um, plus tip. So just make sure that you're asking before you agree to have them cook you breakfast. Um, but yeah, anything to add? It's, it's more of a convenience thing than anything else. Like you can't, right. pay, you're not gonna pay more than, or less than $5 anywhere else. Right, and I mean, at our second place we got oatmeal, we got eggs, we got fresh fruit, we got smoothies, we got a lot for five dollars each every day. So, Tip number 12, bring extra cash. You never know how much you're going to need and how much you're going to spend. We spent so much the first few days, we were literally <laughs> skipping meals in Havana to save money. 
And luckily I had some extra Canadians and I had some extra US dollars. I had to go to the bank, do some uh, exchanges. But anyway, bring more than you think you're gonna need. You're gonna have a good time. You're gonna wanna do stuff. We spent $900 between the two of us in seven days. So that's an indication, $100, $150 a day for two people. And you should be good, but always bring extra just in case. Because your cards don't work. No cards, no debit cards. You can't go to the ATM machine. It's either you bring the money or you're pretty much shit out of luck. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. We hope these tips were helpful helpful for you if you plan on traveling to Cuba. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. We'll be sure to get back to you. I will also link everything that we mentioned down below, our Airbnbs, our excursions, and everything else that we mentioned. Despite what people say, Cuba is actually really, really easy to get in and out of. So if there's any false misconceptions out there, go to Cuba. You won't regret it. You'll have tons of fun. And it's very easy to travel into. I don't think we mentioned that as well, but I'm glad you threw that in. It's very easy. It's very safe, um, despite what a lot of people may think. So if you have any questions about that as well, how hard it may have been for us to get in or how, e how easy, make sure you just ask that in the comments below as well. And I will get back to you. Troy, thank you so much for helping out with this video. If you haven't already, make sure you check out our travel vlog to Cuba. I will also link that down below and we will see you next time. Bye guys. See ya.